We're back with more call to the booth. That's a keep to leave. I'm Harrison Sanford. Before we get into our DFS breakdown for week seven, we got to give a big shout out to two people who are going to now win jerseys that we had for our jersey uh, contest. How did they get it? How did they get it? They subscribed, they rated, they reviewed, they sent us screenshots. You're appreciated. So now you get jerseys and we're going to get your questions answered. First one, first winner, Rashawn Weimer. He wants to know which rookie wide receiver would you take, Jerry Judy or C.D. Lamb? Mm. Man, with uh, with Dak being down, I don't know if that's going to stop that C.D. Lamb momentum. Uh, Judy been decent as well, man, but mm, that's a tough question, man. I'm going to go C.D. I think I – think, I think Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton will get better as the season go on. I think I think if you're throwing the ball around, man, you got to throw it to CD. He's going to work the middle of that field for you, so I'm going to go CD. Okay, and then shout out also to Fernando Gomez, who asked uh, a very good question. Well, and he also wanted to know who do you think – you already said – he wanted to know the defensive player of the year and the MVP. You already talked about Stephon Gilmore, so we'll leave the defensive player of the year out of it. But who's your MVP pick, MVP pick real quick? I'm going Russell Wilson. Right now, I'm going Russell Wilson, man. He's he the most confident player in the NFL right now, man. He ain't lost a game yet. And uh, he's been playing close to perfect, man, all season. Bet. And the re- one of the reasons why we did select Mr. Gomez, shout out to you, Fernando, because, Akeem, check this out. In the email, you know how he ended it? Uh, parentheses, and shout out to DraftKings for the bag. For the bag. He knows what's going on. <laughs> That mean he watching week in, week out, baby. Yeah. Yes, sir. Shout out to <laughs> And with that being said. Now, you know I used to strap your favorite fantasy football player and win my matchup every week. Now, this year, I'm going to break down the game tape and help you win your matchup every week. We got to pull out one running back, two wide receivers, a tight end, and then a flex. Hey, Akeem, yeah. take it away. You said it. You said it, man. This is a, this a tough week this week, man. It's a... A lot of good matchups, a lot of unfavorable matchups. But, man, at that first running back, at that next running back spot, man, we're going to go swift. We're going to go swift. Let's lock swift in at that next running back spot. Uh, he going against Atlanta, man. Atlanta been giving it up on defense. And uh, he's been picking it up on offense. So, man, let's get swift in there. You know he's a, lot, he's a Not, player a lot of fantasy football owners uh, kind of held on to because yeah. Adrian Peterson. Exactly. But now it seems that. He's getting a lot of uptick at 5,400 in the high over under. Even if he doesn't get a rushing touchdown, it seems like he's the one who can catch out the backfield exactly. and make something happen. He did that a couple times this year, too, man. He done caught a couple tubs this year, too. So, uh, the next wide out spot, man. Let's go for one of them wild outs, Paul. Let's go Mike Williams. Where's Mike Williams at? I think they got, they got the Jags. Who Mike them? They got the Jags this week. And uh, Mike was back from that injury, not last week, I think the week before. He was back from that injury, man. He had a big day. Looked healthy, 100 yards, two touchdowns. And I think that was so successful that week. I think Herbert definitely going to throw him some deep balls, man. Def- he definitely going to have a lot of targets. So you come off a game like that, we got two weeks to prepare. Like I said before, he the guy with the most bounce in practice, and, and he's definitely going to be on the script early. Kitty Lynn actually uh, updated people that uh, I think Keenan Allen was still trying to practice or limited right. participant because of his back injury. It's part of the reason why Mike Williams went off. Exactly. Uh, could see it happen again. Got to pay attention to that injury report. You definitely should play Mike Williams if Keenan Allen is not playing. Yeah, Mike That's Williams, almost a lock, right? Mike Williams, <laughs> Mike Williams is going to be playing that number one receiver role probably again this week, so it should be good. Uh, now, you surprised me with your other wide receiver pick, so it needs an explanation. Who you got? Man, I'm going Tim Patrick, man, from them Broncos. Uh... It was it was Drew Lock Drew Lock first week back against a pretty good defense man to man coverage a pretty solid you know Bill Belichick ran defense and the guy to, the guy who he sought out to throw the ball to the most was Tim Patrick man and uh this guy was on this guy was on the practice squad when I, my last year in Denver and I remember me Chris and, and Robe all of us man like man he giving us work at practice he's a hard working guy he he got ball skills that you he got something you can't coach man that's ball skills so. That's why Drew Locke threw him a lot of deep balls. I think he caught one last week, man. He caught another deep ball. He might have had one that he should have caught, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he going to have a lot of targets, man. He had four for like 100 and something last week. Drew Locke felt real comfortable just throwing him the ball, man. So yeah, the Chiefs will play some man coverage. He going to get some man coverage, and, and he got man coverage last week. He liked to throw Tim Patrick the ball. It'll be the same this week. He going to get eight, nine targets again. 
And uh, them ball skills play a major part in man coverage. So he gonna be successful again. Okay, so you got unique insight here. Uh, we got how much left? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars left at our flex position. Where where are we going with that? We spending the whole bag, five thousand. We riding with Debo, man. We riding with Debo. We know he gonna get a bunch of touches, man. That that teams come out at, at the beginning of the week, at the beginning of the game, throughout the week. They they set like a, a first fifteen, so they already know no matter what we running these first fifteen plays at the beginning of the game. And if you watch their first 15 from last week, man, Debo was five or six of those first 15 plays. So he'll be the same. He getting back healthy. He getting, he, getting, he getting back in game shape, getting his feet back under him. So, man, he'll be involved in the, in the five or six of the first 15 this week as well, man. And it's a lot of man coverage. So, like I said, man coverage is favorable, man, when, when, you, when you got guys like that. You could break one tackle and get out of there. So I expect him to get a lot of touches early. And uh, and if he productive with a man, it's gonna continue on late. So Debo, so tell me the defensive lineup he, uh, alignment here, because obviously you have a very good secondary with New England. Uh, this the way Debo is positioned is that something that um, Stephon Gilmore won't be shadowed. Does, does he go to like Brandon Au? Yeah. What happens with like George Kittle? Because these are two masterminds going head to head here. Uh, we'll take a break from like the actual DFS and just talk about how that all the positioning works because exactly a, you got I think, Bill Belichick and you got Shanahan. I think how they use Debo, they won't, they won't, they won't shadow him with Gilmore just on how they use him, man. They bring him in motion, they throw him screens, they they bring him, they give him a little reverse, but it's a pass the, the in front of the quarterback reverse, and he almost like a running back, man. You. You, you get him the ball in his hands, you let him run. So I don't, I don't think that's a guy who you, you're not going to take him away. Even if Gilmore was on him, you kind of wasting Gilmore because you're not going to take away a screen pass. You're not going to take away a reverse with Gilmore. So he's still going to get the ball in his hands. Somebody's going to have to tackle him. So uh, mm. I don't think I don't think it'll be a shadow there, man. I think I think Gilmore just hold down his side this game just because there's so, much, so many moving parts to this offense, man. It could be uh, so many motions, so many screens, so many quick passes. I think you best off just just lining up left and right and playing fast and tackling good against the Niners. Want more dope content? Subscribe and check out the YouTube channel. And while you at it, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Call to the Booth.